guys welcome back to our channel today we're gonna be bringing you guys travel to london Woo! we're gonna be going through two places firstly is london the city of london and second is greenwich both of which is in london itself if you guys are confused london has the greater london but it also has the city of london which is like the main part which london bridge the london tower those iconic places that you know and greenwich is part of the greater london which is where stadiums like the o2 and also where the meridian line is at london is a city full of amazing places but some of these places are hidden from us either by the distance or by sight it would be a shame to miss out these places especially when we do not know about them we visited these less known places last year in November it was easy to get to most of these places especially by the tube in this video we want to show you 18 lesser known places that you love and we'll reveal to you how easy it is to find them and why you should visit them Have you ever wondered what lies behind this hidden alleyway in Covent Garden? Come with me and discover the secret world of Neil's Yard, a colourful oasis in the heart of London. Neil's Yard is named after Thomas Neil, who bought this land in the 1600s. But for centuries, it was just a forgotten corner of the city until some visionary entrepreneurs transformed it into a hub of creativity and wellness in the 1970s. Now, Neil's Yard is home to some of the most charming and quirky shops you'll ever see. You can find everything from organic cosmetics to vintage clothing, from handmade cheese to herbal remedies. And if you're feeling hungry, you can treat yourself to some delicious food from around the world, like pizza, sushi or salad but Neil's Yard is more than just a place to shop and eat it's also a place to relax and recharge your energy Neil's Yard is a hidden gem that you don't want to miss it's only a five minute walk from Covent Garden Station but it feels like a whole different world if you are looking for a hidden treasure in London look no further than the Churchill Law Rooms a museum that takes you back in the time to the darkest days of World War II. The museum is located underground, beneath the streets of Westminster, where Winston Churchill and his cabinet led the war effort against Nazi Germany. The Churchill War Rooms are divided into two parts, the Cabinet War Rooms and the Churchill Museum. The Cabinet War Rooms are the original wartime headquarters preserved as they were when the war ended in 1945. You can walk through the corridors and rooms where Churchill and his staff planned, worked and lived. You can see the maps, phones, typewriters and even the beds where they slept. You can also listen to the audio guide which tells you the stories and secrets of this historic bunker. The Churchill Museum is dedicated to the life and legacy of Winston Churchill one of the most influential figures of the 20th century. You can learn about his childhood, his military career, his political achievements and his personal hobbies. You can see his famous speeches, his awards, his letters and his paintings. You can also discover his quirks and his love for hats, cigars and champagne. He was a man of many talents and contradictions. The Churchill War Rooms are a must-see for anyone interested in history, politics or culture. They are a reminder of how one man and his team faced the greatest challenge of their time and how they shaped the world we live in today. But be warned, once you enter this underground world, you might not want to come out. If you're looking for a hidden gem in London, you'll love St. Catherine Docks, a historic marina that lies next to the Tower of London. St. Catherine Docks is a place where history and modernity meet, where you can enjoy the beauty of the water and the city. St. Catherine Docks was opened in 1848 as a secure and convenient place for ships to trade and repair. It was a busy and prosperous spot until it was bombed by the Germans in World War II. In the 1960s, 
it was transformed into a marina with, with offices and apartments replacing the old warehouses. Now, it's a vibrant and lively place where you can see yachts and boats from all over the world. You can also join a boat tour from here and explore the River Thames and its famous landmarks. Or you can walk along the embankment and admire the stunning view of the Tower Bridge, one of London's most iconic symbols. St. Catherine Dogs is also a great place to eat and shop, with a variety of restaurants and cafes offering cuisines from different countries. And if you're lucky, you might catch one of the events or festivals that take place here throughout the year. St. Catherine Dogs is a place that we love to visit, especially in winter when it's less crowded. It's a place that offers a unique and relaxing experience in the heart of London. One of the oldest and most beautiful markets in London is Leaden Hall Market, a place that has a history of over 700 years. Leaden Hall Market began as a place where people sold poultry, butter and cheese in the Middle Ages. It was rebuilt and enlarged after the Great Fire of London in 1666 and it became a place where you could find all kinds of goods. Leiden Hall Market is not a real market anymore, but a shopping centre that offers a range of high-end shops and services. But it still retains its Victorian charm, with its stunning glass roofs, iron structures and ornate decorations. It's like stepping into another era when you walk through its alleys and arcades. But did you know that Leiden Hall Market has an even older history? It's actually built on the site of a Roman basilica and forum, which date back to the 1st century AD. You can still see some of the Roman remains here. If you know where to look, they are a reminder of how long this place has been a center of commerce and culture in London. And if you are a fan of Harry Potter, you might recognize Lydon Hall Market as one of the filming locations for the movies. You can almost imagine seeing Harry and his friends walking around here. Lydon Hall Market is also a popular spot for workers in the nearby financial district who come here for lunch, coffee or drink. There are many restaurants, cafes and bars here, offering a variety of cuisines and atmospheres. You can find something for every taste and mood here. We love visiting Leiden Hall Market because it's a place that combines history, beauty and fun. It's a place that makes you feel like you're in a different world. If you want to see London from a different perspective, you should visit the Sky Garden, the highest public garden in the city. The Sky Garden is located at the top of a skyscraper that was originally designed to have a ventilation shaft. But in 2014, they turned it into a beautiful garden that offers amazing views of London. From the Sky Garden, you can see some of London's most famous landmarks, such as the Shard, Tower Bridge and St Paul's Cathedral. You can enjoy a panoramic view of the city from the top three floors, where there are also restaurants, bars and viewing decks. The Sky Garden is free to enter, but you need to book your tickets online or by phone. You also need to make reservations if you want to eat or drink at the bars and restaurants. You have to book in advance, as the Sky Garden is very popular. One of the highlights of the Sky Garden is the outdoor terrace on the 36th floor, where you can feel the breeze and see the sky. But be aware that the terrace usually closes by 6pm. The Sky Garden is a wonderful place to visit because it combines nature and architecture in a stunning way. One of the places that we wanted to visit in London was Notting Hill, the famous setting of the movie with Julia Roberts and Hugh Grant. We were curious to see what this place was like in real life. We discovered that Notting Hill is a very charming and colourful area with many lovely houses a hidden Japanese garden, and the Portobello Market. The Portobello Market is a huge street market that has different sections and sells all kinds of things. On Saturdays, the market is at its busiest and most lively. We had a lot of fun browsing and shopping here. We also love taking photos of the houses in Notting Hill. 
which have different colors and styles. But we were careful not to disturb the residents, as these are their private homes. In Notting Hill, we found Holland Park, when we visited the Kyoto Garden. The Kyoto Garden is a beautiful Japanese garden that was given by Kyoto to London in 1991. The garden has everything you would expect from a Japanese garden, such as waterfalls, a cup pond, stepping stones, lanterns, and plants. It's a very peaceful and relaxing place to be in. Holland Park is much bigger than we thought, and it's a great place to spend more time. We really enjoyed our visit to Notting Hill and Holland Park, London is a city that has many canals which were used to transport goods during the Industrial Revolution. One of the most beautiful places to see the canals is Little Venice, a picturesque area with canals and houseboats. Little Venice somehow does look like a smaller version of Venice in Italy, which also has islands and canals. We had a lovely time walking around Little Venice. There are many things to do and see here, such as feeding the ducks in the lake, renting a boat to cruise the canals, or walking and cycling along the canal path. The canal side is full of cafes, shops, and houseboats, which add to the charm of the place. From Little Venice, we followed the Regent's Canal, which connects Little Venice and Regent's Park. The Regent's Canal passes through Camden Town, which is another interesting place to visit. The walk from Little Venice to Regent's Park was very relaxing. We enjoyed the view of the park, which is one of the largest and most beautiful royal parks in London. We will show you more of Regent's Park in our next videos. On our way, we stopped at Primrose Hill, which is a hill that rises 63 meters above sea level. It was a bit of a climb, but it was worth it because we got to see one of the best views of London's skyline. The sunset was amazing. We returned to the canal and continued our journey to Camden Market. Camden Market is a huge market complex that has different sections. The part at the old Camden Lock is called Camden Lock Market. There is so much to explore here. One of the places that we wanted to check out in London was Battersea Power Station, a former coal-fired power station that was bought and renovated by a group of Malaysian companies. We were interested to see how they transformed this historic building into a modern shopping and entertainment complex. Battersea Power Station started operating in the 1930s, providing power for London until 1983. After that, it was left abandoned for 40 years until the Malaysian companies decided to buy and restore it. They reopened it last year as a new destination for shopping and entertainment. Near the power station, we found Battersea Park, which we reached by walking along the River Thames. The park was opened by Queen Victoria in 1848 and has been visited by several other monarchs including Queen Elizabeth. The park is a lovely place to relax and enjoy nature. It has a lot of open spaces, a boating lake, a peace pagoda, gardens, and a promenade by the river. The peace pagoda was built by a Japanese movement in 1895 to promote world peace. It's a beautiful structure that stands out in the park. The power station itself is not just a typical shopping mall. It's a unique and beautiful building that combines industrial heritage with modern facilities. It has shops, restaurants and bars on different levels occupying the spaces of the two former Turbine Hall. Turbine Hall A has an art deco style from the 1930s, while Turbine Hall B has a more industrial look from the later years. The power station has four chimneys and one of them has an observation deck that you can reach by lift 109. From there, you can see a 360 degree view of London. It's an amazing sight. Greenwich is a beautiful place in London, like what I said earlier. It is on the south bank of the River Thames and it is easy to get to from central London. Greenwich has a long history and in ancient times, it was an important point, as Greenwich is a convenient location to travel from London since it is by the River Thames. 
Greenwich also became a royal residence for many Tudor monarchs. Some of them were even born in Greenwich. There are many historical landmarks and monuments in Greenwich, including some lesser known ones that are worth exploring. Do you want to know what they are? Then keep watching! One of the most interesting ways to cross the River Thames is by using the Greenwich Foot Tunnel, which links Greenwich to the Isle of Dogs. The tunnel was opened in 1902 and it is 370 meters long and 15 meters deep. The entrance to the tunnel is hidden inside a dome. You can take elevators at both sides of the river to go down to the tunnel or you can walk down about 100 steps on the spiral stairs. The tunnel was built for the workers who needed to cross the river as it was cheaper and easier than taking a boat. The tunnel is still in use today, after 120 years. It survived the Second World War, although one part of it was damaged and repaired. You can see that this part looks different from the rest of the tunnel. The foot tunnel is an amazing structure and a unique experience. It's cool to walk under the river and think about all the water above us. The Queen's House is a beautiful building that used to be a royal residence for the royal family. It's not as grand as a castle or a palace, but it has a classical style that is elegant and timeless. Since 1934, it has been a museum and an art gallery with a focus on maritime art and history. The most impressive feature of the Queen's House is the spiral staircase, which is said to be the first self-supporting spiral staircase in the UK. There are also many royal portraits on display. In the gallery, you can see the famous and iconic painting of Queen Elizabeth I. This painting celebrates the victory of the English Navy over the Spanish Navy in 1588. Elizabeth I was a powerful and victorious leader who ruled over the seas. She was also born in Greenwich, which makes this painting even more special. You can visit the Queen's house for free, and you can get an Odegai or join a tour. Near the Queen's house, there is the Painted Hall, which is sometimes called London's Sistine Chapel because of the amazing paintings on the ceiling and walls. The paintings show the British naval history with hundreds of characters in them. The painter, Sir James Thornhill, spent 20 years to finish this work. It's a masterpiece. At the end of the painted hall, there's a small room called Nelson Room, which has a fascinating history. It's where Lord Nelson, the greatest hero of the British Navy, was laid before his funeral. You can buy tickets online or on site to visit the Painted Hall and other attractions such as the historic Skittle Alley, which is like a bowling alley from Victorian times. One of the most interesting places to visit in London is the Royal Observatory in Greenwich, a UNESCO heritage site. It's located on a hill. So you have to hike a bit to get there. This is where the world's time is set, on the Prime Meridian, which is an imaginary line where time zero begins. You can have a fun experience by standing with one foot on each side of the Prime Meridian, which means you're in both the West and the East Hemispheres at the same time. Different countries have different times based on their time zone. The Royal Observatory is responsible for keeping track of the world's time. The observatory is also an important place for the history of science. You can see how many discoveries and inventions were made here in the fields of astronomy and navigation. From 1676 to 1948, there were 10 royal astronomers who lived and worked here, studying the stars and the planets. You can see how they lived here. You can also see the different versions of Harrison's clocks, which were improved several times to measure the longitude at sea accurately. There's a huge telescope here that you can use to look at the stars and the galaxies. That's awesome! From here, 
you also have a great view of the London skyline. The altar is a popular venue for music, sports, comedy or entertainment events. We came here to see a Blackpink concert and we had a blast! The concert was well organized and we enjoyed the show. But the O2 is not just an event venue. It also has an outlet shopping center with many shops and restaurants to explore. There are also many walking trails that connect the O2 to other parts of London. We did a fun walk along the line, which is a section of the walk from the Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park to the O2 Arena, following the Prime Meridian. This walk has many weird and wonderful sculptures and art pieces, each with a story to tell. It's a relaxing walk, with a beautiful view of the River Thames. The Thames Barrier is an amazing structure that protects London from flooding. It's located in Greenwich, but it's not close to the other attractions in Greenwich. It's about 10 kilometers downstream, so you need to take a bus or train to get there. Or you can walk if you like. Thames Barrier is one of the largest movable flood barriers in the world. It stretches 520 meters across the River Thames. And it has 10 gates that can rise up to the height of a 5-story building. The Thames Barrier has been working since 1982, saving the city from high tides and floods. You can get a stunning view of this hidden gem from the Riverside Walk, which is on the same side as the Visitor Center. You can also join a guided tour, but you have to book in advance. For another alternative, you can see the Thames Barrier from the Thames Barrier Park, which is a 5-minute walk from the Pontoon Dock, DLR Station. Kew Gardens is a beautiful place that is only 15 kilometers from London. It is one of the world's most important botanical gardens because it has one of the largest and most diverse collections of plants in the world. It has over 30,000 different plant species and it is a major center for research and conservation. The gardens have different sections such as the Temperate House, the Palm House and the Princess of Wales Conservatory. The Temperate House is the biggest glass house in the world and it has many plants from temperate regions around the world. The Palm House has a collection of palm trees and the Princess of Wales Conservatory has a collection of tropical plants. Kew Gardens is also a place where scientists are working to save plant species that are in danger or extinct. The gardens have many educational programs that teach people about plants and why they are important. Kew Gardens is a great place for photography. Even in the winter, Kew Gardens is still amazing. We hope you guys have enjoyed this video and have learned something new about London. These 18 lesser known places are definitely some of the best hidden gems in this city. And we highly, highly recommend you guys to check them out if you have the chance to. They will definitely make your trip more memorable and fun. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Anyways, till we bring you guys travel. Bye.